finally here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Cloudy day. It's been a little bit rainy as well. Uh, off and on showers are possible throughout the game. Wind blowing a little bit to our left. Nothing too crazy, but it is enough to take notice of. Uh, eight miles an hour out of the north, according to the weather report. And there is a chance for all this rain and dark and cloud and all that stuff to get out of here in some sunny skies should this game run a little bit long, like it did last year. These two teams meeting for just the second time as Brevard moves down to Division Three. Last year it was 58-42 in advantage for Brevard. NC Wesleyan won the toss. They will receive for the battling bishops who are in the white and gold. They'll have Marquise Brown and Dupree Falls back and kicking for your Tornadoes will be Jose Flores. Tornadoes, blue, gray, white, and the Wesleyan in their gold and white, Notre Dameish. So we're just about set to go. Settle in, folks, and enjoy this one. Should be a good one. They had a shootout last year. Fingers crossed we'll have that kind of entertainment for you here this afternoon as well. So here's Flores kicking with the wind at his back as he fires it. And we're underway. Coming up is Charles, who takes the kick to the 25-30. Cuts left to the 35-40, and he stopped at the 41-yard uh, line. Let's meet the battling Bishop's offense, and it starts with quarterback number 10, Nate Gardner. 825 yards passing on the season. The receivers, Trey Lancaster, look out for him. 675 yards, 131 yards per game receiving for number six. Also, Quintavian Collars, as my notes are going everywhere. <laughs> the running back, number 26, Jeffrey Black. The fullback is number 44, Rashawn Bullock, and the tight end is number 85, Ben Dorfman, as you see him go in motion to the left here on this first and 10. The handoff and going nowhere is Jeffrey Black. Good penetration by the defense. Let's set the left the uh, line for you for the battling bishop, 79, Malachi Farmer. 55, Carlos Emerson at left tackle and left guard, respectively. At center, it's number 62, Wyatt French at right guard. Number 64, Brian Faust, and at right tackle is number 72, Thomas McFadden. So second down and 10. Again, it's Dorfman in, more, in motion. Rolling to his right, Gardner looking to throw, and it's complete on the near side of your screen. Quintavian Collars is eighth catch of the year. We'll call it a gain of six out to the 47-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and four. So a nice little play there by Gardner. Again, Trey Lancaster is the receiver that Brevard will be most concerned about. Brevard in a 4-3 will set their lineup as uh, if this drive continues. Right now it's Gardner in the shotgun. Out now as a receiver, looking to throw. That's deflected by, I believe, number 95, Kyle Funnel for the Tornadoes on the defensive play. So fourth down and four, and Wesleyan will kick. So a good opening series for Brevard. We didn't get a chance to talk too much about the defense. We will the uh, next series. Nate Gardner will be doing the kicking as well, averaging 37 yards a kick, has one touchback on the season. And the normal punt returner for Brevard is uh, Brandon Whitfield. That's gonna bounce at the 15. It'll be handled at the 11, able to escape one guy, but uh, finally stood up after a gain of maybe a couple. And uh, Wesleyan came out with the football, but the play was dead. That was number 16, Jose Flores, the kicker, doing the punt return there for Brevard. Head coach Bill Kayat in his second year at Brevard, 5-10. and 10. As we talk about their offense now, Dalton Cole is the quarterback, number Seven, 
The receivers, number 12, Bubba Craven. Number 5, Ralph Roman. The running backs, number 4, Bobby uh, Clarissier. And the tight end is number 1, Tyler Gregory, as the rush goes to the right side for a gain of 1 out to the 12. It'll be second down and 9. Number 45, Dalen Curtis is the fullback. The left tackle, number 70, Jaron Long. Number 66, Casey Ulmer at left guard. The center, number 51, Nicholas Eubanks. The right guard, number 76, Chasen Lowry. And the right tackle is number 77, Brandon Ungaist. So Cole in the shotgun. Gregory goes out as the receiver on the near side of your screen. And... Tyler Gregory, the lone back. Cole looking to throw, and he completes it out to the 17-yard uh, line. It looks like where they're going to spot it, so it'll be a third down and six. Set the uh, defense for the battling bishops up front. It's number 89, Nathan France, number 94, James Parrish, number 56, Jeffrey Pearson in the 3-4. The linebackers, 23, Deshaun Finley, 24, Isaiah Williams, 31, Antonio Johnson, and 46, Sam Jones. So third down now. Here's a sweep by Gregory out past the 30, and he's going to get the first down and then some out to the 37-yard line. Tyler Gregory with a gain of 23 on the play, and it's a Brevard first down. Secondary for the battling bishops, the corners, number four, Demervian Franklin, and number three, Keon Washington. The safeties, number 36, Marcus Leggett, and number 13, Christian Shaw. Under center is Cole. The pitch goes out to number four, that's Clarissier. He runs to the right as a first down, gets inside battling bishop territory all the way down to the 46-yard line. Chasen making the stop for the battling bishops, but not after about a 16-yard gain and a first down now as the tornadoes are moving. And this is one of the keys to the game. Brevard came in averaging just 2.3 yards per rush. They've gotten a couple of big rushes here so far in this one. Call in motion, O'Leary, the tight end in motion to the right. A lot of movement. Handoff to the fullback, Wilkinson, the freshman, who takes it to the right side, and Rivard's going deep into the uh, roster so far in the early going. And this one, it's gain of eight, second down and two at the uh, 40 or excuse me, the 38-yard uh, line for the Bishops. Clarissier comes back into the game. And we're going to get a timeout by Brevard. So a timeout, we'll take a quick break and come right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. It'll be second down and two for Brevard out of the timeout. Chris Shima, glad to be back with you. A couple of keys to the game. NC Wesleyan, very disciplined. Penalties and mistakes hurt Brevard last weekend in Alabama, and Brevard has to match the Bishops' offense. So far, they're doing that. Handoff goes to the uh, left side. That's going to be Javian Love, I believe, getting the first down, and then some another big run as Love goes to the left and takes it down to the 26-yard line. So a gain of 12 and another first down for the Tornadoes. Marcus Leggett with his 23rd tackle of the season for the Bishops. So first and 10 now for Brevard on the march here in this opening drive of the game. No score. 
And they have it on NC Wesleyan's 26. Dalton Cole pitches it out. Roman with the catch, escapes a tackler at the 20, down to the 15, 13, and he'll be stopped there. It looks like they'll call it a gain of 13 and another first down. So big plays so far for the Tornadoes here. About five and a half minutes into this one, they had a three and out defensively if you're just joining us. Dalton Cole, 1% of completion rate, 812 yards coming in, five TDs, four interceptions. Ryan Jordan has played some at quarterback as well. More shuffling. It's going to be a handoff. Clarissie is going to be stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a couple. Second down and 12. Correction, second down and 13 from the 13-yard line. So the first good defensive play so far for the Bishops here. Cole facing a blitz. Nice screen pass. It going in for the touchdown is number 85. Correction, number 89. That's Brandon Norris. So Norris with touchdown number one for him on the season. It's touchdown number six passing from Dalton Cole. And Brevard with a successful opening drive. Jose Flores will attempt the extra point. Nine out of 10 so far this year for Flores. Snap good, hole good, kick good, and it's seven nothing in favor of Brevard. 831 left to go here in the opening quarter. We'll take another quick break, come right back. Seven nothing in favor of the Tornadoes. Dalton Cole, touchdown pass to his wide receiver. First touchdown catch of the season for Brandon Norris. Norvard, 88 yard drive. And getting it done via the ground attack. Javion loved two carries for 20 yards so far in this one. Tyler Gregory has 19 yards on a carry, and Clarissia has 14 yards on a couple. So that's what you want to see if you're Brevard. The running game has been a problem this year as that ball is going to be kicked out of bounds off the foot of Flores. So good field position for the battling Bishops to start. But overall, good start for the Tornadoes here. Let's set the Brevard 4-3. Defensive ends, 95 Kyle Fennell and number 35 Axel Easter. With tackles, 72, Louis, uh, Lewis Williams the third, and number 55, Brandon Crawford. The linebackers for Brevard today, number 33, Tanner Pettit, number 40, Samuel Budakafer, and also number 46, Jaquan George. The corners, number three, Andreas Wyatt, and number two, Dante Anderson, and the safeties, number 14, Trayvon Charles, number 37, Wesley Ross. Nate Gardner and Adrian Menando at running back with Dorfman in motion. Handoffs goes to Menando. Big hole up the middle to, to the 45-50. Gets inside Brevard territory at the 48-yard line. A gain of 17 there. Let me uh, correct that. Darius Bird is the running back there. Both teams have gone deep into their rosters, and Darius Bird with a rare carry. So it was not Menando, it was Bird, number 33, who got the rush, and 
Now he's shaken up. So we will step aside. 8.24 to go here in this opening quarter. And Wesleyan trying to match after Brevard scores on its first drive. Welcome back, first down and 10, battling bishops just inside Brevard territory. Chris Shima, glad to be back with you. It's Gardner in the shotgun. Melvin Scott, the running back in motion. Dorfman now comes back left. Gardner looking to throw. That pass is complete for a gain of nine out on the far side of your screen. And it's Quintavian Colors with the grab. Wesley Ross, the safety, making the stop. 32 tackles coming in for Wesley Ross. Battling Bishops with a second and two now from the 41. Melvin Scott, the running back, in motion is Lancaster. Keep your eye on him. The defense is, and that's why Dorfman's wide open as he takes it down to the Brevard 26-yard line. Gain of 15 and a first down. Jackson making the stop. Quentin Jackson, tackle number 24 on the season for him for Brevard. So Melvin Scott continues at running back. Gardner in the shotgun, Dorfman in motion. Now back to the right. Hand off up the middle, it's Melvin Scott and he's stuffed. Might have gotten a yard. Vincent Sneed, the defensive back coming up in the middle to make that play for Brevard. So second down, we'll call it 10 at the 26 yard line. Bishops trailing seven nothing to your Tornadoes. This time Dorfman out as a receiver, Lancaster with the catch, look out. Once he catches it, trying to evade one tackler and they got just enough of them to get his knee down So Trey Lancaster, 41st catch this year. And big number 95, Kyle Fennell, making a nice defensive stop there for Brevard. So third down and six at the 22 now for NC Wesleyan. You see the elusiveness and the speed of Lancaster. He's a great athlete and he's gonna be fun to watch. He's out right now, look out for Collars. He's had the hot hand now. Lancaster in motion to the far side. Collars is on the near side and Gardner facing pressure, throws it into the end zone and it's almost picked off. Intended for Lancaster, that was Wesley Ross, I believe, who almost came up with the play. So that's, brings up fourth down now and six and decision time now for Head coach Jeff Filkowski in his sixth season at NC Wesleyan. Filkowski, 23 and 31 overall. He coached at Marietta in Ohio. Good Division Three school there on the Ohio River. They are going to go for it. They've only attempted two field goals all year. So fourth and six. Safety's dropping back for Brevard. Not as much pressure this time, but Gardner misses is intended receiver Dorfman on the far side, and that'll give the Brevard Tornadoes the football back.
there was a penalty. So flag on the play, and it's going to go against the Tornadoes. Oh, if you want to ensure that you're running a lot of laps on Monday, on a fourth down play, commit a defensive penalty and see how that goes over with Bill Kyatt. So the penalty will lead to a first down, and instead of Brevard going on offense, it's going to be NC Wesleyan first and 10 at the 12-yard line. And now the officials are going to get together and discuss. So everybody on the same page. Big number 44 for NC Wesleyan. Rashawn Bullock, the fullback, six foot 250 in. He's offset to the left. To the right, Nash Nasheed Peoples. It is a running play. Brevard was expecting it, and they stuff it for, doesn't look like a gain. So second down and 10 for Vard's defense. Melvin Scott with another rush. Melvin Scott is second rush of the afternoon, yet to gain anything. Darius Bird we've seen. Jeffrey Black and Adrian Minado are the two main runners. We've yet to see them for NC Wesleyan. Two deeps are meaningless here, folks. <laughs> Nate Gardner sending the tight end in motion. That's Peoples. Another handoff up the middle. Brevard was ready for it again. I believe Wesley Ross, the safety, might have come up and helped. So Scott with another carry, and again, nothing happening. So it was Ross who got up and made the play, and now another opportunity here on third down and 10 for Brevard. Just inside, four minutes to go here in the opening quarter. It's 7-0 Tornadoes. Three and out on the first series for Wesleyan. Doing a little bit better on this drive. Dorfman back in and tight end. Now he goes slot to the left. Gardner the throw, looking for Dorfman. He's wide open, and it's caught for the touchdown. Ben Dorfman, his third TD of the season. Nate Gardner, his eighth touchdown pass for an extra point from being even Steven at 7-all. Gail Mann, the normal kicker. Looks like they got somebody different. No, that's Caleb Mann out there. So he is 11 out of 11 in extra points so far this season. Kick is up, and it is good, and we are tied at 7. So both teams starting to cook on offense. We'll take another timeout. Brevard will get the football back when you come back here in just a moment. Seven all. Brevard looking for their second USA South victory. Wesleyan looking for its third. Chris Sheeman, glad to be back with you. Want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Arby's, Ingalls, Pepsi, Zagsby's, Jet Pizza, Hampton Inn, Dugan's Pub, Mission Sports Medicine, Comporium, and Holiday Inn Express, as well as Hampton Inn. All of those folks are the reason why we're able to bring you this broadcast here today. So it'll be man to kick off. Getting back to receive is Love and Charles. And it's going to be Charles who picks it up, Oops. evades a defender at the 25, takes it to the 30, 40 and finally gets out of bounds. They're gonna mark him at the 41 yard line. Trayvon Charles with some shake and bake on that kick return. Charles average is over 30 yards a return. So 
not a big surprise there. Missed tackles by the special teams for the battling bishops. Mentioned Jeff Filkowski in his sixth season at NC Wesleyan. He is, as we have an injured player for the battling bishops from the Pittsburgh area, great football area there. I mentioned he coached at Marietta in Ohio and in Division Three football, Ohio and Wisconsin are the class of Division Three with Mountain Union, the Purple Raiders from my old neck of the woods in Northeast Ohio. Meanwhile, Bill Kyatt in his second season with the Tornadoes. Last year, the team was 75% freshman and he was able to coach them the four and six, their first year in Division Three. Kyatt was a wide receiver at Duke. He's a guy who's very familiar with North Carolina and had over 1,100 yards receiving during his time at Duke. He was on NFL practice squads in Kansas City and Carolina and many others. His dad, Bill Kyatt's dad, who might be watching, was a uh, 1960 NFL champion with the Philadelphia Eagles. He coached for 25 years. Dad played defensive tackle. Couldn't quite see the uh, number for NC Wesley in the injured party on that kick return. I believe it's Deshaun Finley, folks, but uh, don't put that in stone. And hopefully he'll be all right. So let's see what Brevard can do, averaging close to 10 yards per play, getting the running game going, mainly on that uh, first drive. 88-yard drive for a touchdown and 54 yards rushing already for Brevard. That's a great sign. They fake the pitch, hand it off, and up the middle. It'll be a gain of, looks like about six, out to the 48-yard line, and I could not see the number. I believe it was Clarissier who got that handoff. It was Bennett on that last run, so Aaron Bennett with the run for a gain of six. And now Clarissier is going to be wrapped up in the backfield for a loss of three. So Bobby Clarissier, who came in with 144 yards on the season, going backwards there. Third down and seven on the 44-yard line. So far today, Brevard one for one on third down. Dalton Cole, two backs in the backfield, although Tyler Gregory might go in motion. They're going to use him as a blocker. Pressure, and that pass intended for Martigas Henley is going to bounce, and good defensive series for the battling Bishops after they gave up that long drive to open the game. Brevard will have to kick it here. Ralph Roman, 36 yards a kick. Had a long of 49 this season as he gets it away. Number 82 is back to receive. Kevin Alford Jr., the redshirt freshman, out to the 35-40. Spins at the 45, takes it to midfield, but there is a flag down. So a good return as it stands right now. Ralph Roman. So Kevin Alford, but it is a holding, it looks like, on Wesleyan, so that'll back him up some. Just inside two minutes to go here in the opening quarter, seven all. De La Fuente, the guilty party on the hold. And we'll see where they back them up to. It's 10 yards from the spot, so. It looks like they're gonna start at the 30 yard line. So that's where Dalton, excuse me, that's where uh, Nate Gardner and the offense will take over. Gardner has Melvin Scott again at running back. Not sure why we haven't seen Jeffrey Black or Menondo today. Those are the two 
main rushing threats and good ones for the Bishops. Gardner's looking deep. He's throwing deep, and it's a diving grab, and it's caught down at the 20-yard line. Trey Lancaster. I told you to keep your eye on him. 131 yards a game receiving, and that was a bomb. 50-yard play. Garner again in the shotgun with Melvin Scott, the running back. This time he rolls right. He might want to... He's thinking about taking off. Not a big runner. Instead, bounces the pass for Cullers instead. Good defense there that time after Brevard got torched by that big play. Trey Lancaster is somebody who draws a lot of eyes, and we saw it on the last drive. That gave the tight end, Ben Dorfman, a couple of open looks, one for a touchdown. So 120 left to go, and it'll be second and 10 from the 20-yard line for Wesleyan. Brevard on that first drive actually stopped Wesleyan on the fourth down, but they committed a penalty, which kept that drive going. Melvin Scott still at running back. Garner looking to throw, again looking for Lancaster, and that's punched out of the way. Dante Anderson. That was a big man play right there for Dante. Anderson, the sophomore from Hartwell, Georgia, is going to have a busy day today as he tries to deal with Lancaster. So third and ten now. And the momentum back on the tornado side now after that big play, 50-yard completion to Lancaster. There are one more stop from possibly a field goal or a fourth and long here. They're going to hand it off to Scott. Scott up the middle and pretty good gain of five down to the 15 there. Good blocking Wyatt French. You always like to see the big center coming up right with the running back. Just follow me, brother. I'll take you where you need to go. So that sets up a fourth down. They're going to move it back a little bit, it looks like. So we'll call it a gain of four. Fourth down and six inside a minute to play here in the opening quarter. And it looks like they're going to kick the field goal. Caleb Mann, one out of two, as long as 31. This will be about a 31-yarder here. So it would match it. Looks like Garner might be the holder here as well. So look out for any trickeration. They are going to kick it. It's up. And man, able to connect, so he matches his season long of 31 yards. He's two out of three kicking field goals now, and NC Wesleyan takes the lead 10 to seven now, late in this first quarter. So that big play to Trey Lancaster, a I believe a 50 yard completion. They have it on the stats as 50. Trey Lancaster now, two catches for 54 yards as Nate Gardner, 6 out of 10 throwing. Darius Bird, 2 rushes for 16 yards. And another successful drive that time for North Carolina Wesleyan. Wesleyan, as I mentioned, they're 2-1-1 in the USA South, so this is an important game for Brevard. You send, you win this game, you send the Bishops to 2-2, two and two. you improve to 2-2 two and two and have that tiebreaker advantage. Bill Kyatt mentioned it during the uh, Facebook Live show that they do on the Tornadoes Facebook page that, you know, this is last year when they had success. They finished 3-2 and two down the stretch and a slow start this year at 1-4, and four, but they're going to try to pick things up here at the end of the year. Kill a man to kick it off. He's kicking it to fall, or excuse me, to uh, number eight. That's uh, Charles, who had a good return. Spins away this time at the 30, takes it to the 35, and he's upset with himself because he got taken down at about the 37-yard line. But overall, pretty good return of 27 for Trayvon Charles. He wants a touchdown every single time he catches that football, and he's not settling for anything less. He tried the spin move again. It worked on the uh, last kick return, but uh, not this time. 
Clarissier at running back, back there with Gregory. And I believe it's Love. No, correction. That's Henley. Henley goes in motion to the far side. Dalton Cole in the shotgun, sending one receiver, Roman, to the near side. They're going to pitch it out to him, and Roman dropped it. He saw the safety leg it coming and dropped the pass. So 13 seconds left to go here in this opening quarter. Second down and 10 from their own 36. You can use the uh, hashtag NATO Nation if you want to chat with me during today's game on Twitter. Again, hashtag NATO Nation. I'll be checking it once in a while. So second and 10 now. Handoff to Love. And they were ready for him that time. That's Jeffrey Person, his third tackle for a loss this year, and it's a big loss. Looks like a loss of about five. So quarter number one expires. We'll have third down and 15 when we come back. Second quarter action coming up here from Brevard Memorial Stadium in just a couple of minutes. Chris Sheeman, glad to be back with you. Teams change sides. It'll be third and 15 for Brevard at its own 32-yard line. 10-7 Wesleyan. These two teams combined for over 1,000 yards of offense last year. So far, Wesleyan 115 yards and Brevard with 87. Brevard successful on one third down conversion so far today, but this one... A little bit longer, third and 15. Looking to throw out to the near side and it's gonna be caught by Roman. He's gonna be just shy of that first down marker. It'll be fourth and inches. And what do you do if you're Bill Kayat here? I mean, fourth down and centimeters. Brevard trying to rush. The official, the sideline guy on the far side was not ready and blows the play dead, so no play there. James Parrish's helmet came off now. Since there was no play, I'm not sure if he's going to have to come off or not, though. Technically, that play didn't count. Be nice if you're a Brevard fan to get the guy who's 6'1", 315 out for a play, though. Yeah, he does have to come out, so they're going to bring in 92. That's Charles Spears. So they allowed the play to happen? Is that what happened, guys? That play counted. The <laughs> Okay. All right, first and 10 then. As Brevard ran the sneak, it was Cole getting just what he needed. And the drive continues. In motion is Norris. He's the slot receiver to the left. It's going to be a handoff. I believe it's Love. Correction. That's number 20 for Brevard running to the right side. That's Aaron Bennett. Aaron Bennett, Bennett gains game. six yards, and we'll call it second down and four as Brevard gets inside Wesleyan territory. Okay, so what happened on that fourth down play is there was no fourth down because they measured and it was a first down. So my apologies. In motion is Roman. Dalton Cole gets the snap and the handoff. Again, it's Bennett. And Bennett gets back to the line of scrimmage. So third down and four. Here 
Third down and four from the Bishops, 48 for Brevard. So Brevard now two out of three on third down. Cole fakes the handoff to Clarissier. Pass is caught over the middle. And it'll be a Tornado's first down. Trayvon Edge with the catch. And Washington making the stop for the battling Bishops, but not after a first down for Brevard. Third completion and four tries on third down. First down and 10 now at the 42 yard line. As the Tornadoes look to answer back. Catalan, the tight end on the left. Here's the pass complete to Roman. Roman dragging his defender, fighting with him. It was uh, number 24 for Wesley and Isaiah Williams making the play, but not after a gain of nine. Second down and one for the Tornadoes at the 33 of the Bishops. 10-7 in favor of Wesley and Caleb Mann. It's listed as a 33-yard field goal, his longest of the season is the difference in this one. Clarissier dancing and just not able to get it going. He's going to lose a yard as a matter of fact, so that'll bring up third down and short, third down and two, back at the 34-yard line. Clarissier, 3.2 yards per rush on the year. But still a third down and manageable, and Brevard today has had good success on third down. Gregory lines up as the tight end spot. Curtis doing the blocking and that pass thrown over the middle and almost intercepted by Washington. So fourth down and two, Brevard will go for it. Bringing in an extra receiver, it's Cortez Scales, number 10 coming in. Blake Taylor, number 16 also coming in as Bubba Craven and Bobby Carissier come out. Empty backfield for Dalton Cole. Coming in motion is Roman though. Cole on fourth and two, pass over to middle and that will be caught for the first down, down to the 29 yard line. It's a five yard pickup. And on the reception, it's Gabriel Catalan. Third catch of the year for Catalan. Inside 11 to play here in the opening half. Cole on first down. The handoff, Clarissier trying to run right, dives ahead, might have gained a couple. In fact, he did gain a couple down to the 27 yard line. It'll be second down and eight. So Brevard doing a good job here on this drive, managing it. They're three of five on third down so far in the game, 126 total yards of offense. And Dinkin and Duncan so far, Cole play action. He rolls to his left, looking deep, wide open. In the end zone, it's caught. Cortez scales, touchdown Brevard. Scales with his third catch of the season and his first touchdown of the year as Brevard goes back up. It's 13 to 10 pending the kick from Flores here. Looks like Kramer is the holder here for Flores. And the kick knuckles through, 14 to 10, Brevard, 10.02 left to go here in the second quarter. We'll step aside, 
for another uh, moment or two. Come back with the Wesleyan offense on the field here in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Jose Flores set to kick off after Brevard goes back on top. It's 13 to 10. That ball is going to be caught by Lancaster. Look out. Lancaster is getting around the edge to the 50-40. Inside Brevard territory, he's at the 30, and he stepped out of bounds. So... They let Trey Lancaster return one, and you see what kind of damage he can do. Another big play for him. He had a 50-yard catch earlier. Quinton Jackson made a touchdown saving push to get him to step out of bounds, but great field position for the Bishops. First and 10 at the Brevard 26-yard line. Looks like a Brevard player is shaken up on the other side of the field. So we will step aside here for just a moment while they attend to him. Good hand from the home fans for Isaac Crisp, who was shaken up but walking off under his own power, and that's a good sign for Brevard. So Trey Lancaster with a, a big return there and great field position to start this drive for Nate Gardner and the offense. Gardner. Looking to throw, facing some pressure. Pass complete over the middle. It's Dorfman for a gain of 11 and a first down. Pass complete to number 85, Ben Dorfman. Brought down by number 57, John Burton. Number 57 for Brevard. John Burton, the third, making the stop. Burton, his 11th tackle of the season, but an 11 yard gain. Gives Wesleyan another first and 10 here. Ball on the 15. Handoff goes to Scott. And Scott able to dive forward for a couple. That was number 55 getting there quickly for Brevard. Brandon Crawford, the junior. Brings up second and seven. So second and eight from the 13 yard line. Play action. Gardner throwing it for Lancaster and it's over his head in the end zone. Pass is complete, brings up third down. Trey Lancaster came in with 40 catches on the season. He is Nationally ranked for NC Wesleyan. He leads the USA South in receiving yards and yards per game. He's tied for the lead with four touchdowns. He's 10th in Division Three in yards per game. Trey Lancaster had a season high of 210 yards receiving against Thomas Moore in the season opener. 
Bo Gardner with the third down, and we'll call it seven now. Dorfman in motion to the right. Screen pass. And that's Lancaster. He's trying to get to the outside, and the defense able to wrap him up in the backfield. It'll be a loss of six down to the 19. Trayvon Charles making the big play there, the tackle for loss from the safety. So fourth down now, and NC Wesleyan in good position to try to tie it here. Caleb Mann hit a 33-yarder in the first quarter. Two for three now, including that field goal on the season. Gardner will hold. The kick is up, and from 42 yards away, it's good. So we are tied at 13, 7.56 left to go in this opening half. These two teams battled back and forth last year, and it's shaping up to be another good one here in 2018. We'll step aside for just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Well, I'm sure Kayla Mann won't mind that I gave him a few extra yards on that field goal. It was actually 36 yards, but it, either way, it's his longest of the year again. And we are tied at 13 apiece. Mann will kick off now from his 35. Trayvon Charles has been doing most of the work receiving, and they're going to keep it away from him this time. The little pooch goes to Roman, I believe. Roman trying to get to the outside, and he's going to get pushed out at the 30. Five, Ralph Roman the third, so Ralph Roman the third with the catch, and Brevard takes over on its own 30-yard line. Chris Shima, glad to be with you. First of uh, two broadcasts that the folks here were nice enough to lower their standards and hire me to do. I'll be back with you next week as Brevard takes on LaGrange. That'll be at 2 p.m. It'll be better next week because I'll, be, I'll have that extra hour of sleep. So stick around. Come on back. In motion on the far side now is Craven. The receiver slotted out. Roman will go in motion that way as well on first down. Uh-oh. Cole was hit as he threw. And almost, Nathan France almost came up with it. So the line so far today for Brevard has done very well. Mentioned Brevard came in near the bottom of Division Three in yards per rush, but they are running the football a little bit better here today, certainly. They've got 60 yards rushing so far today, 55 in the first quarter when they were really pounding it. Option pitch now goes out to Bennett, and Bennett dances and dunks for a six-yard gain. That'll bring up now third down and four from the 36-yard line. Catalan, the tight end, comes into the game. Brandon Norris, the receiver, also checking in for Brevard. Cortez scales the receiver on the near side of your screen. Roman on the far side. Joining him is Norris now goes out to the far side. Nice comebacker. And it's caught by Scales. Scales caught the touchdown earlier, takes it out to the 48-yard line. Gain of 11 and a first down for Brevard. 13 apiece. This has been a fun one. These two teams are very well matched here today. Last year, the Tornadoes won the first ever meeting, 58 to 42. Teams combined for 10, 1,059 yards of offense. I don't think we're going to get that many, but it's been very competitive. Cole looking to throw again. That one's going to be a little bit too high, intended for Brandon Norris. Passing complete. 
So second and ten now for the Tornadoes. In motion is Roman. Cole had him, but instead throws it over the middle. Passes complete to Clarissier. Out to the 50, so a gain of two. And that'll bring up third down and eight. Four of six, Brevard on third down today. Tyler Gregory checking in. Henley also out there, the receiver, number nine. So another third down. Brevard successful so far today. Clarissier, the back with Gregory to Cole's left. Cole facing pressure. He's going to be hit, and they haven't blown the whistle yet. Antonio Johnson, the linebacker, started grabbing at the football, and they didn't play, blow the play dead. So let's see who comes out with it. And they're going to say NC Wesleyan got the turnover. Now, once a player's forward progress stops, usually, especially if it's a quarterback, you're going to hear a whistle. You did not that time, though, as Cole was still kind of going forward. So uh, the first turnover of the game, and this is one of those things that Bill Kayat was most concerned about. Some turnovers in key situations led to that blowout loss in Alabama last weekend, and now the big play offense of the battling Bishops. You don't want to give them good field position, and that's just what you've done here in Brevard territory at the 45. Here's Gardner back out there. Handoff goes to Scott. Scott gets to the outside 40, 35, and he's taken down at the Brevard 28, or excuse me, the Brevard 33-yard line. So it's a gain of 12 and a first down. They'll say it's at the 32, so we'll give them 13 on that one. Andreas Wyatt made a nice stop there defensively, but not after a big play. Melvin Scott had 28 rushes coming in. He has seen the bulk of the work today. Gets another one, goes right again, and they're exploiting that right side. Another good gain. It's a gain of six. Crawford making the stop for Brevard. The sun is starting to peek through a little bit. Second down and four now for the Bishops on the Tornado's 32-yard line. Good opportunity here if you're the Bishops, although they, they've got a lot of big play capabilities on uh, the offensive side to maybe run a little clock here. We'll see if they hand it off to Scott again. They will. This time he's going right up the middle as the first down and then some. Gets to the outside. 20-15-10, and he's going to be taken out of bounds at the four-yard line. A 22-yard gain. Melvin Scott came in with 108 total yards rushing on the season. And he's near 50, so he's nearing, the, he's nearing that halfway mark to 100 here late in this first half. So first and goal. Tornado's defense has played pretty well here today, but there have been some big plays from this Bishop's offense. Garner with Scott in the shotgun again. Garner's going to throw this time. He's looking for Lancaster, doesn't have him. Instead, it's Dorfman again for the touchdown. Ben Dorfman with his second touchdown catch of the afternoon. Four catches for 42 yards now. And the Bishops are an extra point away from making it a seven-point game. Wesleyan three and two on the year. Nate Gardner's been slinging it. He'll hold on the extra point attempt for Kayla Mann, who also has two field goals today. That kick is up, and it's good. 
22-13 now. NC Wesleyan over Brevard with 329 left to go here in this opening half. So if you're the Tornadoes, still plenty of time here. They've had some success on the kick return as well here today, so if they can get some decent field position, a lot of time the offense to do its thing. So far today, Dalton Cole, 10 out of 15 for 108 yards, two touchdowns. Nate Gardner, 9 of 14 for 104 and two TD throws. Aaron Bennett, the leading rusher for the Tornadoes here today. He's got 20 yards on five carries. One of uh, five guys to get a rush attempt so far here today. Rivard started their opening drive with a couple of big runs. Since then, the rushing game has gone a little bit downhill. They haven't looked to do it as much as well. Should mention that. Caleb Mann. With the kickoff again, it's taken by an up man. That's number 44, Court, uh, McCall Phillips, I believe, making the return and takes it out to the 37 yard line. Well, they attribute it to Courtney Adams, but I would say it's McCall Phillips. So, Wesleyan a little bit concerned with the returning capabilities, especially from Trayvon Charles. So, this is good field position for Brevard with 324. They got plenty of time. Four shotgun set now. Norris goes in motion, three to the far side. Cole facing pressure, looking out for Norris. And Washington whiffed Norris with a big gain. Well, they say he stepped out of bounds. Near midfield, they'll mark him at the 48. So it's a gain of 11 and a first down, but Keon Washington's eyes lit up like a cat in the night, thinking about picking it for six, and he just completely missed it. So an 11 yard gain. Clock continues to run, but Brevard doesn't really have to rush here with the ball nearly at midfield. Cole's got Javion Love in at running back. Two receivers to each side. Coming in motion now is Craven. Looking to throw, looking for the deep ball. And that's incomplete. Tyler Gregory unable to come up with it. And the home crowd begs for interference to no avail. Tyler Gregory also looking for the call. Marcus Leggett making the stop. <laughs> so the fans are fired up, but it will be second down and 10. That does uh, stop the uh, clock at 2.37, too. Chris Sheeman, glad to be with you here this afternoon. It's turned out to a, be a very nice day, 60 degrees, little wind. The flags are all hanging and chilling right now. Not much wind. There was more wind earlier today. Dalton Cole getting good time, throws it over to middle. This time Tyler Gregory has it, so a big gain there down to the 32-yard line. It's a 16 and a first down. I know it's basketball, but what did Rasheed Wallace used to say? He used to say, ball don't lie. So Gregory gets the catch and a makeup, at least as far as the universe is concerned. Second time they tried a big play to Gregory and it worked out for him. Love remains in at running back, lined up to Dalton Cole's right. Three receivers on the near side and one to the far. Cole looking to throw it again, facing some pressure and able to dive forward. Gets a gain of uh, two or three down to the 29 yard line. They'll call it a gain of two. Clock does continue to run here with 140 left to go. Still don't need to be in a big rush, but you want to at least be aware of it as we near 90 seconds left to go here in this opening half. 
Tornadoes. Jose Flores, three field goal attempts on the year. So two receivers to each side now for Dalton Cole as Love steps to his left. Cole looks to throw again. 112 left to go. The ball's out. Cole tries to fall on it, but it's picked up. NC Wesleyan comes up with the big turnover. It's number 31. That's Antonio Johnson who takes it to the house. Turnovers again for the Tornadoes, just like last week, have led to two scores for the battling Bishops as they take now a two-touchdown lead. How about Antonio Johnson making the play? That's his second fumble recovery of the season. Antonio Johnson, the junior from Beaufort, North Carolina. And a chance now to put his team up two scores pending this extra point for Caleb Mann. He's yet to miss today. And that kick is good. 27 to 13, NC Wesleyan off two turnovers, convert them both to touchdowns and with inside a minute to go, still an opportunity for Brevard here. But they're gonna need some decent field position again. We'll, we'll see, it'll be interesting to see how Jeff Filkowski and his special teams coordinator decides to handle this. They've been kicking it to the up men because they've been concerned after a couple of uh, big returns from Trayvon Charles. They've really tried to keep it out of his hands. So they've been kicking it to up men, which has led to some field, good field positions for, for Brevard. And at the same time, you give them field position with less than a minute left, then you know they can sling it into the end zone again. Or you kick it to Charles, and he's got the potential to return it and give him good field position as well. So what do you do if you're NC Wesleyan? It'll be interesting to see what they do here with 58 seconds left. Brevard's offense has done a good job today staying on the field, keeping their defense well rested, but those two turnovers, I mean, you just can't have it. It is the single most important stat in football, turnovers. They're gonna pooch it again. Charles is gonna get it at the 25. Let's see what damage he could do. Gets to the 35 and he'll fall forward. We'll see where they spot it, but it'll be around the 38. So 53 seconds, Brevard, I believe has at least a couple timeouts left. I got to think they're going to go for it here and try to do something to get some momentum back because this game was back and forth and then a couple of turnovers and NC Wesleyan has all the momentum right now. Dalton Cole will hand it off, and I believe that's Clarissier who's going to be stopped at the 33-yard line. It's going to be a loss of five. So Brevard is playing it safe here. Bill Kayad, after those two turnovers, wants to get to the locker room and get his team reorganized. Brevard. I believe we'll get the football. So they will start the second half with the football. Clarissier going up the middle and takes it out to the 43 yard line, gain of 10. And that'll set up a third down, but with six seconds, that will most likely be the half. So the first half comes to an end. Pretty competitive back and forth, although a couple of turnovers for Brevard lead to two touchdowns for NC Wesleyan. And it's the battling Bishops who go to the locker room with a 26 to 13 lead. Folks, we'll take a break for the half here and get you some stats and some more information here coming up in just a couple of minutes.
Halftime here at Brevard Memorial Stadium, North Carolina Wesleyan with a 26-13 lead. We'll have all the stats in a first half recap coming up shortly, but want to tell you about what's going on around Brevard College Athletics. This weekend, the cycling program is at the USA Cycling Collegiate National Championships in Missoula, Montana. 11 student athletes made that trip and they're on day two of three in Missoula, Montana at the USA Cycling Collegiate Mountain Bike National Championships. In case you didn't know, Brevard College has won 10 national championships, six in the mountain bikes and four in cyclocross competition and going for number 11 this weekend at the national championships in Missoula, Montana. So good luck the rest of the weekend to the Brevard College cycling program up there in Missoula, Montana. And do want to let you know what's going on for the rest of this week around the world of Brevard College athletics. Tomorrow, women's volleyball is on the road at a tri-match in LaGrange, Georgia. Tornadoes will face LaGrange at 10 a.m. and then Maryville at 12 noon. So good luck to the Brevard College volleyball team in action tomorrow. Men's soccer has a home match at 6 p.m. this Monday. So hope you can make it over to campus as the Tornadoes men's soccer team takes on Bob Jones at 6 p.m. And the women's golf team heads to Spartanburg, South Carolina for the Converse Fall Invite Monday and Tuesday. Now, many of you tune into Facebook Live for the weekly Tornado Talk Show. Because of that men's soccer game on Monday night, there will not be the usual Monday night Tornado Talk at Dugan's Pub. Instead, uh, we want you all to be at the men's soccer game on Monday night. But on Tuesday night, 6 p.m., at the cafeteria on campus, on the Brevard College campus, a special edition of Tornado Talk. We're going to welcome back that cycling team uh, from the Mountain Bike National Championships. We're going to talk some football, um, obviously coming off this game that you're watching now between Brevard and North Carolina Wesleyan. We're also going to preview the upcoming climbing competition that will take place a week from today at the Brevard College um, this climbing program at the Brevard Rock Gym. A uh, couple more events to tell you about. Uh, women's soccer and women's volleyball are both on the road on Wednesday of next week. Men's soccer will be back at home on Friday, October 26th when they face off against LaGrange at 6 p.m. And then a week from today, just a huge day in Brevard College Athletics, uh, it'll all get started with the Brevard College climbing competition at the Brevard Rock Gym. That will go off uh, early afternoon at the Brevard Rock Gym. Hope you can join us for that just down the street from campus. Women's volleyball is on the road, but then a huge slate of home action. Men's soccer senior day at noon as the Tornadoes take on Piedmont International. Football right here at Brevard Memorial Stadium as Brevard takes on LaGrange at 2 p.m. And then Women's Soccer Senior Day, a great year th so far for Brevard College Women's Soccer as Brevard takes on Regent at 3 p.m. So all sorts of activity for you to follow with, with regards to Brevard College Athletics. Go to bctornadoes.com or follow the Tornadoes on social media and you'll get all the updates there. We'll come back with some stats in a first half recap and then the second half of action where North Carolina Wesleyan leads Brevard 26-13 right here at Brevard Memorial Stadium.
Chris Schumann welcoming you back, Brevard Memorial Stadium. The sun is out for the first time today. Still a lot of clouds, but they're starting to give way. It was 60 degrees. It's warming up a little bit. 26 to 13, NC Wesleyan over your Brevard Tornadoes. Let's take a look at the uh, first half numbers. Total yards in the game, 167 for Wesleyan, 188 for Brevard. It's the two turnovers that really have hurt Brevard so far today. They've led to 14 points for NC Wesleyan. Rushing yards, 63 for NC Wesleyan and 48 for Brevard. Brevard had 50 near the end of the first quarter, so their rushing attack went silent in that second half, or in that second quarter, excuse me. Passing yards, 104 for Wesleyan and 144 your Tornadoes. It's Dalton Cole, 12 of 18, 140 yards, two touchdowns. Rushing for Brevard, Tyler Gregory, one attempt, 19 yards. Aaron Bennett, five for 20, and Javion Love has three for 16. Receiving Cortez Scales Jr., two catches, 38 yards, and a touchdown. One catch apiece for Devin, uh, Devon Edge, Tyler Gregory, Bobby uh, Clarissier, and also Nate Osborne, Ralph Roman the third, and Gabriel Catalan. Brandon Norris with a couple of catches as well for Brevard. Very balanced offensive attack today for Brevard. For NC Wesleyan, Nate Gardner, 9 of 14, 104 yards passing, two touchdown throws. Melvin Scott, eight attempts, 47 yards, nearing six yards per carry. Darius Bird, two attempts and 16 yards. Three catches for Trey Lancaster, 48 yards. That's holding him in check, folks, by the way. He had a 50-yarder as well. Quinn Collars, two for 14, and Ben Dorfman with four catches for 42 yards. Those are your first half numbers. So Brevard will receive to start this second half. It's Love and Charles back to receive. Caleb Mann, a couple of field goals in that first half for NC Wesleyan. He'll kick it off. They've been avoiding Trayvon Charles. Charles had three returns for 79 yards in that first half, so they're trying to keep it away from him as best they can. They've been kicking it to Upman. And we'll see if that's the strategy going forward. So settle in, folks. We'll see if Brevard can come back. They've had the offensive numbers to do it, just have to take care of the football against this very disciplined NC Wesleyan team. We've seen very few penalties on either side here today. It's been a fun one. Hopefully the second half will hold the same. And again, it's gonna be Charles catching it at the 19. Looks to take it up the middle, goes around to the 25. He spins back around at the 25, dancing and dunking, but eventually four guys take him down, led by number 55, Carlos Emerson. Danielle, or excuse me, Kevin Wright also in there for NC Wesleyan. So first down and 10 at the 26 for Brevard. The wind was blowing out towards the left at the start of the game. The wind is gone now. As I mentioned, the clouds are starting to thin out, as you can see. So sunny skies. Hopefully for the remainder of this one is Dalton Cole back out in quarterback. He's going to hand it off to Javion Love, who tries to take it to the outside, and he's going to be stopped for a loss back at the 20-yard line. It's a loss of six and a second down and 16. That's one of those things that coaches teach. you got to go forward sometimes. You get it in your mind, well, maybe if I go this way, there'll be something. Maybe if I go that way, something. And then the next thing you know, you're stopped for a six-yard loss. Sometimes just take that two-yard loss. It's, it's, it's not the best thing that you wanted when you started out the play, but it's better than being at a second down and 16 now. Three receivers on the far side. Now Roman comes to the near side. Quick pitch to him, and it's off the mark from usually reliable Dalton Cole. A rare incompletion for Dalton today. Third 
12 for 18 is Cole. So third down and 16, not the start you wanted here in the second half for Brevard. Last year in the second half of the season, Brevard won three of five games, including one against NC Wesleyan, who's from Rocky Mount over near the eastern part of the state. Third down and long, and it looks like that was a uh, change at quarterback there. So they brought in Jacob Gravitt, who ran with it, and he gained about four yards, but that's not going to be enough. So fourth down, and likely Brevard will punt. Ralph Roman punts it, and it's caught at the 41-yard line by number 82, Kevin Alford, but he's going nowhere. In fact, he went backwards down to the 36-yard line and making the stop on the play is Brandon Whitfield. A lot of folks from Georgia were in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Brevard, North Carolina, but we're not that far from Georgia, so... You've got Georgia, you've got Tennessee, you've got South Carolina, and you've got North Carolina that Bill Kayat can really use at his disposal. And four great football states, by the way. A lot of talent, even you know, at all levels of, of athletics. So NC Wesleyan's got a very diverse roster. They've got some local guys, but uh, players from all over the country. Nate Gardner back out there starting this second half. A play action to Scott. Gardner's looking deep, and that probably means Lancaster, and it's going to be picked off. Andreas Wyatt coming up with the pick at the 40. He's at the 50, and he'll be taken down inside Wesleyan territory at the 48-yard line. That was Trayvon Charles. My apologies, I think thought it was Wyatt, but Charles came up with that big turnover, and that might be the turnover that the Tornadoes need to get momentum back on their side. So Trayvon Charles with his first pick of the year and also gives Brevard good field position at the 48 of Wesleyan. It looks like 17 Gravit is back out there now. Gravit looks to throw. Pass complete on the near side at the 40-35 and taken down inside the 35 at the 33 is number 12. That's Bubba Craven. So it's a gain of, we'll call it 15 and a first down for the Tornadoes. So Gravit, who we haven't seen much this year for Brevard, is getting some second-half work here in place of Dalton Cole. Gravit has Bennett to his right. The tight end, Gregory, in motion to the right as well. Gravit looking to throw. Passes caught by Gregory, but Wesleyan was ready for it. It's Demervian Franklin making the tackle after a gain of one. Well, they'll call it two, so second down and eight. Down to the 32-yard line. Correction, second and nine. Just underway here in the second half. Brevard three and out on their first drive. Got an interception thanks to Trayvon Charles. Grab it the quarterback now. Three receivers on the near side. He looks that way. The toss and a little bit off the mark intended for Roman. Ralph Roman the third. He's a junior from Arizona. Awatuki, Arizona. Folks in Arizona, can you can tweet at me if, if I got that right or not. I'm curious. <laughs> Started uh, collegiate at Scottsdale or excuse me, at, uh, yeah, at Scottsdale, Arizona. Devin Edge, who we see at all as well, also from Scottsdale Community College. So a couple players going the Juco route. 
Third down and nine at the Wesleyan 32 now for Gravit and the offense. Three receivers bunched to the near side. Gravit again looks that way, and the pass is caught down to the 20. Goes Brandon Norris, a gain of 12 and a first down for the Tornadoes. Brandon Norris with another catch today. And that is his third of the afternoon. Backup tight end is in. That's Jaden O'Leary, number 48, doing some blocking. Clarissier tries to run on his side and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Clarissier now eight attempts and just 17 yards so far. He'll check out. Bennett comes back in. Aaron Bennett, who we haven't seen much of this year, the freshman from Gastonia is getting some time here in this big USA South matchup. Wesleyan at two and one, Brevard one and two. Under center is Gravit now, the pitch goes to Bennett. Bennett stood up at the uh, 16 yard line, gain of four and that'll bring up third down and six now. Brevard's had good success on third down today. Five of nine. Wesleyan just one of five on third down this afternoon. Brevard trying to make Wesleyan pay after the turnover off the interception. Two to one the turnovers here in this one. Grab it, rolls to his right. Turns around and Tyler Gregory might have been better off dropping that one. Instead, he catches it and he's going to be dropped all the way back at the 626 yard line. That's a loss of 10. No, nope, hang on. They might have blown that play dead. Brevard, no. Nope. It will be fourth down. So, fourth down. And 15. So Gravit will have to work some magic here. Gregory comes to the backfield. And they're sending number 16, Blake Taylor in motion and a delay a game is called on Brevard, and this drive is getting uglier by the play. Back to the 31 yard line now. That'll bring up fourth down and 20. It'll be about a 48 yard field goal. Jose Flores has a long of 31, so not much to do here, but go for it. Maybe do a pooch. Gravit's going to take off, and he'll get to the 25, but Wesleyan escapes after turning the ball over for the first time here today. They will make the defensive stops that they need to get the football back. 8.37 left to go here in the third quarter. It'll be Bishop's football, first and 10. Well, Phil was on at halftime telling you about all the stuff going on at Brevard athletically this week. Don't forget next week. We'll have the game for you if you can't come out to Memorial Field. LaGrange comes to town at 2 p.m. Hershima, glad to be with you for this one and that one. Gardner gives the handoff. I believe it was Scott. We'll check on that, but he does not get much. It was Melvin Scott. Melvin Scott came in just 28 rushes on the season. Jeffrey Black had 58. Adrian Minando had 53. They'd done the bulk of the work all season. We have yet to see either one of them here today.
each side now on second and we'll call it nine from the 26 yard line. Gardner looking the throw, pass is caught by Lancaster. Lancaster caught it at the 32 and gained seven additional yards. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for the Bishops. So Lancaster up to 62 yards receiving. And another first down for Wesleyan. In motion is Dorfman, the tight end. Now comes back to the right. Handoff goes to Scott. And Scott up the middle, gains about four. Taken down by Chris Diaz, Brandon Crawford was also there, I believe. So it's a gain of four, second and six now, past the midway point of quarter number three, 26 to 13, NC Wesleyan. Dorfman again, coming back to the near side. Handoff goes to Scott and Good penetration by that front line in the 4-3 for Brevard as they stop him for a loss of three back to the 47-yard line, and that'll bring up a third down and seven. Wesley Ross, the safety, actually came up. Front line got good penetration, though. Brandon Crawford, the big guy in the middle. Let's see if Brevard defense can get another key third down. One of five on third down at the start of this drive for Wesleyan. Garner's going to hand it off. Up the middle goes Scott, and he's going to be tripped up at the 47-yard line. It's a gain of four, and that will bring up a fourth down and three. Charles making the stop for Brevard, and that'll bring out or keep out Nate Gardner. Gardner does most of the kicking for Wesleyan, averaging 37 yards a punt. Back to receive for Brevard is Taylor. Good penetration and a nice job by Garner to get that one away. Pretty good return as well by Taylor as he takes it out to the 37 yard line. So that's where Brevard will take over. Plenty of time for Brevard here. 5.19 left to go in the third quarter. It's just a two possession game. But the crowd's a little quieter and the momentum right now on the side of the battling Bishops. We'll see if the Tornadoes can change that. Again, it's Jacob Gravitt who's gotten the start here in the second half. Dalton Cole had a fine first half, so Gravitt getting some minutes. Play action. Gravitt rolls to his right, facing pressure, dances around, and he's going to be sacked for a loss of one. Number 17, Jacob Gravitt on the carry. Brought down by number 96, Jonathan Cassidy. 96, Jonathan Chasen was there. Also number 31, Antonio Johnson. Credit on the sack goes to Chasen. And that's his first sack of the season. Second down and 11. Ball at the 37 now for Brevard. Clock continues to move. 438 and counting. Boy, it's turning into a beautiful day here in the mountains. Fall was in the air. Gotta love this time of the year. Grab it low snap. It was a fake. And now the end around goes out to the 44-yard uh, line as Tyler Gregory with the carry. Gain of six, third down and four now for the Tornadoes. We're down to 50% now on third down. Five out of 10 so far here today. Two 
Two receivers to the far side. Two to near, near. Grab it, throws it over the middle, and it's caught for a first down. Ralph Roman inside NC Wesleyan territory at the 44-yard line, a pickup of 10. And the drive continues for the Tornadoes. Folks, while we have a second, want to give a shout out to a few of our sponsors who make this game possible, including Arby's and Ingles, Pepsi, Zaxby's, Jets Pizza, Dugan's Pub, Mission Sports Medicine, Comporium, Holiday Inn Express, and Hampton Inn. Thanks. Give your thanks to all of those folks when you're in town. More motion, two receivers bunched up to each side now. In motion is Roman and whistles. It's a delay of game on Brevard on a first down. So that'll back him up five yards. Still inside Wesleyan territory at the 49. Henley comes out of the ball game, and I believe Bubba Craven came back in for him. Slotted out now is Norris. Kravit looking the throw, facing some pressure. Kravit will get it out of bounds. He was outside the pocket. Good pressure from number 89, Nathan France. 94, James Parrish was the first one in there as well. They call grounding on that? Boy, they called grounding. I thought he was well outside of the pocket. I'm not quite sure why they would call that. All you have to do is be outside the pocket. And if near the sideline isn't outside of the pocket, then the pocket's too big. But I don't have a whistle, and it's second and 26, no matter what I think. So Brevard will have some work to do now if they're going to keep this drive going, and it has been a difficult start, to say the least, to this second half. Grab it in the shotgun, looking to throw, and passes dropped over the middle. It was intended for Catalan, who had a catch in the first half. Good defense. Credit the battling Bishops secondary here in this second half. They have really stifled this Brevard offense. So third and 26 from their own 40 for Brevard. Grab it, and with a nice throw, it's caught. Bubba Craven on the near side. He's going to be stopped right away by Christian Shaw, but that makes it now third down and uh, about six, So, or excuse me, fourth down and six. So all of a sudden you go from third and forever, you get that completion, and now you can go for it on fourth down. So that was a nice play by the youngster Kravitz. The sophomore from South Paulding High School in Georgia. They are going to kick it, though. Ralph Roman will pooch it, and it's going to die inside the five. A beautiful kick by Roman to pin Wesleyan back. So we'll take a quick timeout and see Wesleyan will be backed up near their own end zone when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Late third quarter. Wesleyan backed up in their in, end zone. Going to try to run out of it. And first and ten at the three. Not much doing. We'll see who got the carry there here in just a moment. That was 28. A brand new guy who I don't have on my roster. So 
Let's double check here. Yeah, there. I don't have a 28. So our mystery man gained a couple out to the five-yard line. It's a gain of three, they call it. Second down and seven now. Gardner looking deep and overshot Lancaster, or he would have been gone. So third down and seven now. It's always interesting to see how coaches like to handle it when you're backed up in your end zone. So a real opportunity here thanks to the punting efforts from Ralph Roman for Brevard to get a quick stop and the ball back. Offense has not done much here in this third quarter. in his end zone facing pressure gets it out it's caught by Lancaster and he's going to be just past the first down marker we're going to call it a gain of eight and that'll be enough for a first down who out of all the division one and division two schools out there did not want to give Trey Lancaster a scholarship offer Quintavian Cullors has had a good day, too. He's slotted out to the far side. I say that assuming that that's where Lancaster wanted to go. That's not always the case at this level. Division three is very unique. Garner, quick toss out. It's complete to Dupree Falls, and he's going to be stood up in the backfield, taken down. They're going to mark him at the 12. It's a loss of three, and that will do it for quarter number three. So, nobody in the end zone here in this third quarter, but NC Wesleyan will take that as they maintain a two-score lead. It'll be second for long and long for them when we come back here in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. About to start quarter number four. Total offense, 253 yards for Brevard, just 198 for Wesleyan, but Wesleyan's got a two-touchdown advantage so far. Nate Gardner with a second down and 13. As the team switch sides, Gardner looking deep, and that's overshot. Dupree Falls did as much as he could to try to catch that one. Jacob Gravitz come in for Brevard, 7 of 11, 57 yards passing, replacing Dalton Cole, who had 140 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. Nate Gardner for NC Wesleyan, 12 out of 19 for 124 coming into this third quarter. Melvin Scott, 12 rushes, 55 yards. And Trey Lancaster, 5 catches and 71 yards. Third down and long now, it's third and 13. Lancaster is slotted in the middle. Keep your eye on him. Nate Gardner looking deep again, and that pass is going to be caught. What a catch for Dupree Falls. That was good defense for Brevard there, but there is a flag on the play. Mary I Parks 
was in on the coverage for Brevard. And the penalty goes against Brevard. So the play will stand. And it's going to be a personal foul face mask on Brevard. So that's going to add on 15 yards. Well, new week, same story. I heard Bill Kyatt talk about it, and it's penalties and it's little mistakes that have doomed this team, and certainly the last two weeks. So good field position now at the 36 for Gardner and the Bishops. Nate Gardner, another good day for him. All three quarterbacks have played well. And off is going to go down to the 31-yard line. We'll check the runner. It's number 28 again. And they have it listed as Jalen Mitchell. So Mitchell gets the run. That's his second carry of the day. Five-yard gain, second and five. Eight yards on two carries now for Jalen Mitchell. Ball at the 31-yard line here on second down. Nate Gardner facing some pressure, throws it over the middle and too high for Ben Dorfman. Good pressure there for Brevard. Give credit to Axel Easter for getting in there. And also number 55. We've called Brandon Crawford's name out quite a bit defensively here today for the Tornadoes. Brevard 1-4, 1-2 in USA South play and 1-0 here at home. NC Wesleyan 3 and 2, 2 and 1 in USA South play and 1 and 1 on the road. So a lot on the line here. Third down and 5 at the Tornadoes 31 for NC Wesleyan. Dorfman in motion to the right. Pressure again, the blitz and the sack by the corner Anderson. Back at the 40. Dante Anderson's first sack of the year. And a big loss of 10. Fourth down, well, we'll call it nine, so it'll be fourth and 14. And it looks like Nate Gardner is gonna kick this one away here. Back to receive again, Blake Taylor for Brevard. And a high kick, Taylor, fair catch signal, and he dropped it. Oh, no, he dropped it. Now is it, there is a scrum for it. Was he given enough room to catch that? And there's no flag down indicating otherwise. So who's going to come out of the pile with it? NC Wesleyan is doing their politicking right now. And they say it's Wesleyan football. Third turnover of the afternoon for the Tornadoes. And this one might be the dagger. The wind has started to pick up as well. So with 13 minutes left to go, Wesleyan is gonna have it first down and 10 at the 15 yard line of Brevard. Three touchdowns doesn't necessarily put it away, but Brevard has done very little offensively in the second half. Handoff goes to Mitchell, and Mitchell gains two down to the nine. Correction, 14. Number 72, Lewis Williams the third, making the stop, the freshman from Concord.
So second down and nine. Start of the fourth quarter, Bishop's up two touchdowns, looking for more. Lancaster goes in motion to the near side. They're gonna run it again. It's a sweep to the near side. Mitchell gets inside the 10, it looks like, on the second effort. He'll be stopped at the nine. So a gain of five, and third down and four is what NC Wesleyan will be facing. Melvin Scott got the bulk of the carries in the first half. 12 rushes, 55 yards. Jalen Mitchell, three for nine now. Make it four for 14 after that last pickup. Third and four. Tornadoes need a stop here. They're throwing for Lancaster, but threw it too far to his left. So fourth down, a field goal. Makes it a 16-point game, so Brevard's still within two scores. And let's see what Jeff Filkowski and the Bishops decide to do here on fourth. Oh, wait a minute. We got a flag down. So they're going to decline a holding penalty. So a field goal makes it a 16-point game. Still two scores. Kayla Mann is three out of three today. His long is 36. This one will be much shorter. 26 yards. The hold by Gardner is good and the kick is good as well. Three out of three today for Kayla Mann as he makes it a 16 point game, 29 to 13. So Brevard's still in it, but they're gonna have to get something going on offense here in this fourth quarter when we come back. Welcome back to Brevard Memorial Stadium, 29-13. North Carolina Wesleyan up two scores and a couple extra, or excuse me, a couple two-point conversions. Chris Sheeman, glad to be back with you. The rain has gone away. Sunny skies have prevailed here in this second half, and that ball's going to be picked up at the one-yard line. A couple of shake-and-bake moves again by Trayvon Charles as he gets it past the 20. They'll mark them at the 22, and that's where Brevard will take it over. 11.20 left to go, still plenty of time, but I just get the feeling momentum-wise that Brevard needs to make something happen in this drive. They need to get points on this drive. Temperatures improved a little bit, up to 66 degrees now here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Had a chance to come up. I live in South Carolina. I had a chance to come up a couple of days ago. If you ever get a chance to go the back way up to Mount Mitchell on the Blue Ridge Parkway, it's North Carolina Highway 80, and it is the windiest road I've ever been on. We had a little adventure yesterday. Not much in the way of fall colors for the people who are spending upwards of $300 a night for hotels, though. Looks like we have offsetting penalties here, so the ball will remain at the 22. I saw a hotel. I was looking at hotels maybe to uh, come up and stay a while. I saw a hotel room as much as $600 for one night at a hotel in Asheville because it's leaf season, everybody, <laughs> except it's not really. 
all the tropical moisture kind of killed that. Back in at quarterback is Kravitz. He's played the entire second half. Play action by him, looking for somebody. He's got it complete on the near side. Catalan had it and then got jacked. A big hit by Christian Shaw, the safety, to knock that ball away. So that'll bring up second down and 10. Tyler Gregory asking for a penalty, but it was a clean hit and a big one. Of course, since everything's a penalty now in football, whenever you hit somebody hard like that, the automatic reflex was to uh, ask for a penalty. Looks like we have a, a timeout on the field as well. So 11-14 left to go. Let's run through some numbers for you. Brevard's offense started this game cooking. They had an 88-yard opening drive, 253 total yards. They're out gaining NC Wesleyan, 253 to 253. 37, but three turnovers today for the Tornadoes. Gravit in the shotgun as we're back to live action here on second and 10. Gravit's got some space. He'll take off to the 25, 30, 35, and he'll get out of bounds past the 35. They'll mark him at the 36, gain of 14, and a first down for the Tornadoes. Bill Kayat liking his legs, the legs of credit. Uh, Kravitz, excuse me, Dalton Cole, more of a pocket passer, and Kravitz will run with the football. So that speed gives him and the Tornadoes a much needed first down. Like I said, the game's not over if, if this drive fizzles out, but get the feeling the way the momentum's going, especially in the second half. Brevard's got to make a score. Looking over the middle, and that pass is dropped by Ralph Roman. So second and 10 from the 36, 10 36 left to go in the ball game. The wind is back blowing in the opposite direction, blowing in the face of the tornado. Still not very powerful, but enough to slow down a pass a little. Three receivers on the far side. Kravitz looks that way. He's got some more room again. He'll take off to the 40, 45, dives ahead, and it's a gain of 11 and another first down. So back-to-back -back runs for Kravitz. It's, well, it's working right now for Brevard. Jalen, or excuse me, Isaiah Will, or excuse me, uh, yeah, De La Fuente is down right now for NC Wesleyan. So an injury timeout, 10.27 left to go. We will step aside as well. Welcome back, everybody. After the injury timeout, it'll be a first and 10 for Brevard at the 47-yard line. Clock starts up again, 10 and a half remaining here in the ball game. Brevard 
Still down two scores, got to convert a couple of two pointers, but it is a two score game. Kravitz looks to the near side, passes caught by Craven. Craven gets away from a defender. Inside Wesleyan territory and he'll be down at the 30 yard line. It's a gain of 23. And fingers crossed if you're a Tornadoes fan, the momentum starting to come back a little bit. Brevard yet to score in the, in the second half. They were back and forth in the first half, just three points so far in this second half. Gravin in the offense trying to change that. Gravit looking to throw again over on the left side. That pass is going to be caught again. It's Henley, I believe, down to the 14. Gain of 16 yards and another first down. Marcus Leggett, who we've talked about quite often from Clinton, Merrigan, and Shep, Maryland, excuse me, making the stop. The fade into the end zone. The ball is caught, but is it inbounds? Yes! A touchdown, and I believe it's Roman. I have to check on it. Grab it with the touchdown, his first of the game. And Brevard is away from making it a one-score game. It was Craven for the second time today who made the touchdown grab over on the far side with the sun coming in. I got blinded for a minute. So they will go for two. It's a wildcat pitch. It goes out to Bennett who will dance in. And it's a one score game just like that. 29-21 NC Wesleyan. Brevard with their first score of the half and they cut the deficit to one. 9.18 left to go in the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere, folks. This one starting to get good again. We'll be right back. Brevard has marched their way into the end zone and back into this ball game. 331 yards of offense for Brevard and just 237 for Wesleyan. North Carolina Wesleyan leading where it counts though, 29 to 21. They'll get the football back. Jose Flores getting set to kick it away for the Tornadoes. Dupree Falls, Marquise Brown are back there amongst others. We saw Trey Lancaster back there earlier. It's going to be caught over on the uh, far side by Falls. Falls takes it to the near side, 35, dances around at the 37, and he's taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So pretty good return for Dupree Falls there for Brevard Vincent Sneed. The Floridian making the stop. They actually move it up to the 39-yard line. Parks was also in on that play for Brevard. So Brevard defense needs to make something happen here. 9.08 left to go. Mitchell back out there at running back. Nate Gardner has him to the right. Lancaster comes in motion. Trey Lancaster had a 50-yard catch earlier. It's going to be complete over on the far side out to the 44-yard uh, line by Quintavian Cullers making the catch. So five-yard gain, second down and five. If you're Wesleyan, you will 
flawed callers as way for just, just staying in bounds, keeping that clock going. There's still plenty of time in the game, but every second counts when you got that lead. Mitchell comes to the left side now of Nate Gardner in the shotgun set. Two receivers to the near side. Tight end offset to the near side. That's Dorfman. Handoff goes to Mitchell. And Mitchell gets back to the line of scrimmage. They gave him a yard out to the 45. That'll bring up third down and four. So a huge third down now. Brevard tries to get a three and out here and get the football right back. Chance to tie it with a touchdown and a two point conversion. Three receivers bunched to the far side. Coming in motion is Falls to the near side. Two receivers now on each side. Gardner rolls right. Pass is caught by Colors, and he gets out of bounds inside Brevard territory down to the 46-yard line, and that'll be enough for an NC Wesleyan first down, so they keep their drive going. Opportunity now to run a couple of more minutes off the clock as well. As it starts up again, we're just past the midway point of quarter number four. NC Wesleyan, third USA South game, putting themselves in position for the conference. Of course, Averett will have a lot to say about that. Lancaster comes in motion. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell trying to get to the outside on the far side, and he's going to be stopped at about the 42. We'll see where they spot it. Looks like it's a gain of five, they'll call it. So second down and five. Inside seven minutes to go. Now these two teams have only met twice and both games have been classics. Last year the Tornadoes won in Rocky Mount, which is a couple hours from the Outer Banks. Gardner, two receivers to each side. Looks to throw. Facing some pressure, he'll take off and slide. Looks like they're going to give him a gain of one, so that'll bring up a third down and four. Again, a smart play. Keeps the clock moving. Positive yardage. Third down and manageable. I like what I've seen from Gardner today. He's the senior from Hetford. North Carolina, small part of the state. And he makes a lot of smart decisions. All three quarterbacks we've seen today have played very well. So Gardner in the offense now with a third down and four at the 41. Gardner looks to throw on the far side. It's Dorfman again, and again, it's just enough for a first down. Call it a gain of six or seven. Down to the 34-yard uh, line. So that wouldn't make it seven. And a penalty, though. So they called a penalty on NC Wesley, and I did not see a flag. Holding. It's going to be holding. So a killer for the Bishops. And we'll see where they spot it. 5.33 left to go. Boy, they're going to move it all the way back in their own territory at the 49. So third down and 15. Garner sending falls in motion. Two receivers to each side again. Garner looking to bomb it, and that's going to be a little bit long, intended for falls on the far side of your screen. So the penalty stops the drive, and now Wesleyan will kick it away with 5.15 left to go here in the ball game. Plenty of time 
for the Tornadoes now. So Nate Gardner again, he does the punting. The quarterback for Wesleyan. Helps when you can recruit a guy from a rural area, likely knows how to play multiple positions, and he's got a good kick. It's gonna be caught by Taylor at the 15, he's, or at the five, he's trying to get to the outside edge. But a great tackle by number 24, Isaiah Williams. And there's another flag down. So let's see what happened first. Injured Brevard player is down, a flag down. A lot going on right now on this play. If it's on Brevard, can't go back much further. So it is on Brevard, a block in the back. So Brevard will be backed up here, but they've got 5.03 to work with. Clarissier is back in at running back. We haven't seen him much in this second half. I believe it's still Gravit, the quarterback. Dalton Cole started the game, played all of the first half. Gravit's played in the second half. Both have played admirably. Under center now is Gravit. The fullback, Curtis, in motion. And they're going to dive it ahead. Gravit just trying to get that out of the end zone and Using that big line, Eubanks, Lowry, Ungangst, Almer, and Long pushing it forward out to the six-yard line. So it's a gain of just three, but it gives you a little more wiggle room. Clock continuing to run, by the way, nearing four and a half left to play here in this fourth and final, possibly quarter. Rivard needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Right now they're just thinking of getting this first down. Nice cut back up the middle. And Clarissier, I believe, was the running back who kept the pile moving. Keep those legs moving if you're a running back. That's what he did there. And he might have the first down as a result. It was Clarissier. So it's a gain of six and a first down. 4.09 and counting. Still plenty of time for Brevard, but you want to give yourself a little wiggle room. They made one two-point conversion already today. Gravit checks his play card. Gregory on the near side with Roman. Nice move by Gravit to escape. He's trying to get to the outside, does a flip up in the air and gets out to the 17 yard line. It's a gain of four. And he earned every bit of those four yards. So Gravit makes it second down and six now. Clock continues to run. They've run a lot of time just to try to get it close to the 20. They're gonna have to go a little bit quicker now. Nearing three minutes left to go. They've already run two off the clock. Oh, that pass is going to be bounced, a drop. Gravit put it right on the numbers. Brandon Norris unable to come up with that one, I believe. Looks like an injured Wesleyan player will stop the clock at 3.08. A brief injury. Deshaun Finley will have to come out. Third down and six. Big play here for the Tornadoes. Trying to keep this drive going. Inside three minutes to go. Grab it. And that's gonna be caught by Clarissier. He's gonna take it forward. He'll have the first down and out to the 26 yard line. So another good play by Kravit. Jacob Kravitz, 11 out of 18 now. That was a gain of nine. Kravitz now up to 119 yards passing 
all here in this second half. Brevard two and a half to go, and that's going to be a false start. So if you're a glass half full kind of person, that stopped the clock briefly, but <laughs> first and 15, you don't want to be going backwards, nearing two minutes left to go. They've got to try something down the field now. It's been a lot of dinking and dunking. they got to make a play. They've used about three minutes just to get it out to the 21 from their own end zone, from about the three. And that's not going to get it done. Kravitz will get a few of those penalty yards back, but at this point of the game, you gotta throw it. The clock does stop with 2.03 left to go, I believe. Brevard might have called time out there. Well, the officials stopped the clock. Second down and 13 now. Kravitz. Looks over the middle, the pass is caught. Trying to keep himself going and doing it nicely is Clarissier again, another first down for him. Ball out to the 38 yard line. Boy, they started the clock fast that time, didn't they? 139 left to go, Kravit trying to hurry up his guys. The crowd urging him on. Five receivers set. Kravitz looking for the bomb. He's got a wide open man on the near on the far side. It's Taylor with the reception down to the Wesleyan 38. A gain of 24. 124 left to go. And Brevard is on the march. Kravitz again. It's going to be throws from here. Throws another one for Taylor, and he's wide open again down to the 15. Three guys take him down at the 12. It's a gain of 25. And Brevard is knocking on the door. 113 left to go here in regulation. And we're going to get a timeout on the field. Wesleyan calls timeout. Not a bad idea. <laughs> they try to stop the momentum and get their defense reorganized as they've given up two big plays, both caught by Blake Taylor, the freshman from Danridge, Tennessee. So 113 left to go. It'll be first and 10. The important thing is, is that first and 10 at the 12, that means Brevard will have more opportunities if they can get it to the two or closer and not in the end zone. Aside from these next four downs, of course. I gotta tell you, they have managed this drive beautifully. I thought they were going way too slow. Bill Kayette and Offensive uh, coaches should be commended. Got to convert it to points, though, if you're going to come back and tie it. Kravitz in the shotgun again. Low snap. He fakes it. He'll take it ahead. And he gains a few before he's knocked down. So it's a gain of two. Second down. And at the one-minute mark, Brevard now will call a timeout. Brevard converting on a touchdown and two-point conversion play already in this half. It was Bennett, the running back, who scored the two-pointer. And at this point, that's what it's got to be if Brevard's going to come back and tie this. Or they have to leave themselves enough time for an onside kick and then maybe some trickery, those kinds of things. But right now, this drive is working just as they had hoped. One minute left to go. And they're in position with a second down and nine at the 11. 
That's all you can ask for as you're building a team. Bill Kayat in his second year here. Try to make this team a Division Three contender. Out of the timeout. In motion is Gregory. Cavett looks right, throws into the end zone, and the uh, receiver, Henley, fell down, or he would have been wide open in the backside of the end zone. I'm not sure if the pass would have gotten to him. Third down and nine now. Guys, do we know how many timeouts Brevard has left? I know we've seen at least one timeout, so... It's got to come on this drive. They don't have enough timeouts to keep the game going, most likely. Grab it on third down. Four down territory. They're going to run it with Clarissier. He gets to the left, gets it down to the six. Clock continues to run. 44 seconds. It's fourth down. They have two timeouts left, and they're going to use one of them here. So the ball game is on the line right now and Brevard will call a timeout. Stick around after the game, folks. I'll give you a, a quick recap and stats. Also get you set for next week. It'll be Brevard and LaGrange. I'll have that one for you right back here in the mountains at uh, 2 p.m. coming up on next Saturday. That'll be October 27th. Then Brevard goes on the road. They've got to take on Averett. That's going to be a difficult one on the road, certainly. Averett took down NC Wesleyan 24-14 last Saturday. Averett 4-1 so far in 2018. Then Brevard is home on November 10th against Greensboro, and then the makeup game on the 17th against Allen University, which I believe is an NAIA program. Here we go, folks. Fourth down and four, 39 seconds. Brevard with the football down by eight. Kravitz, two receivers to the near side and one to the far. Kravitz rolls to the near side. He's got room. He's going to go for it, and he's going to be stopped. Now, that's enough for a first down. So he got at least five yards there. He's going to be stopped shy of the goal line, but he will have a first down. Oh, what a heady play. Jacob Kravitz. Gravit, the sophomore from Georgia, looking to dive ahead now, and the snap was low, and Gravit able to fall on it. 19 seconds left to go, and Brevard will call its third and final timeout here, I believe. So second down and goal now from the one-yard line. Don't forget, Brevard will also need the two-point conversion. How about Jacob Gravitz day, though? <laughs> we did not have him even on the two-deep. Ryan Jordan has seen the bulk of the minutes for Brevard as the backup quarterback so far in 2018. Brevard, they have outgained Wesleyan 432 yards to 257 yards. Three turnovers so far today for the Tornadoes. And that's really the only thing keeping Wesleyan having the lead right now. So let's see if they try to sneak it again. Well, it's going to be a wildcat, it looks like. Gregory goes ahead. And he stood up. No timeouts left. There are no timeouts with 12 seconds. Brevard's got to go quickly. It's Tyler Gregory now. He's going to line up again in the Wildcat. Three backs behind him. Gregory comes forward. He's going to be stopped. He tried to pitch it out. And Wesleyan will hang on as the clock hits zero. Unbelievable goal line stand from the battling bishops who battled their way to a victory here today. Unbelievable. Tyler Gregory did everything he could. You can see he was going to be stood up, tried to get it out to the running back, but 
no dice for this Brevard Tornadoes team as they fall now to one and five. NC Wesleyan now four and two, three and one more importantly in USA South play. And two and one on the road. Brevard falls to one and five, one and three in the USA South and it's their first home loss of the season today. 29 to 21, but what a thriller it was. These two teams are building quite the rivalry, which is now even, by the way, at one game apiece. Well, let's roll down the uh, final numbers for you here today. Brevard, as I mentioned, out gaining NC Wesleyan 432 yards to 257. 324 yards passing for Brevard, 175 for Wesleyan. Under eight yards rushing for Brevard, 82 for Wesleyan. For North Carolina Wesleyan, Nate Gardner, 15 out of 26, 175 yards, two touchdowns and one pick. The running backs, Melvin Scott, 12 attempts, 55 yards. Jalen Mitchell, six for 19. Darius Bird, two for 16. The receivers, Trey Lancaster, another day for him over 100 yards receiving, six catches, 108 yards. Ben Dorfman had four for 42 and two touchdowns. Collars had four for 28 and Dupree Falls, one for negative three yards. For Brevard, Jacob Gravitt, 14 out of 23, all in the second half, 184 yards, one touchdown. Dalton Cole, 12 for 18 for 140 and two touchdowns. Jacob Gravitt, 11 rushes, 50 yards. 11 for 29 yards. Aaron Bennett, 6 for 24. Tyler Gregory, 1 for 19. Javion Love, 4 for 10. And that's your rushing today for Brevard. Receiving Bubba Craven, 4 catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. Blake Taylor, 2 for 50. Ralph Roman, Brandon Norris, three for 39 as well with a touchdown. Cortez Scales, Jr., two for 38 with the score. Clarissier had three for 26. Tyler Gregory, four for 19. Martingus Henley, one for 16. Gabriel Robillard Catalan, two for 10 yards. Nate Osborne had one catch for nine, and Devin Edge, one for six. So those are your stats as NC Wesleyan wins it today, 29 to 21. Again, for Brevard, next Saturday, they take on LaGrange right back here at Memorial Stadium at 2 p.m. If you can't come out for that one, I'll be back with you tomorrow, or excuse me, next Saturday. Again, 2 p.m. start. I wanna say uh, thanks to Phil and everybody here at Brevard for allowing me to be a part of the broadcast and come on into your homes and wherever you might be. Don't forget, folks, come on back next week, see if Brevard can get that second win of the season as they take on LaGrange. Once again, your final, it's NC Wesleyan 29, Brevard 21. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.